John Boy. John. Lessons from the screen, what we mean is we go through Different documentaries to tell you what they gon' do Give you our lessons, give them our blessings If they trash, we tell you, there is no second guessing Knowledge is power, but time is precious And we're here to keep you from them with lessons So sit back as we groove, giving you the review So you only spend time on the docs that you need to Welcome to another episode of Lessons from the Screen The show where we give you a review of whether or not Any particular thing that you can get through any particular screen of any kind is worth your time we waste our time our energy and our brain power so that you don't have to you're welcome lessons from the screen is sponsored by pack sync a black activist advocacy and think tank organization with the purpose of increasing the quality of life for black people in america through education economics and the culture shift you can check them out at www.packsync.org that's p-a-c-t-s-i-n-c.org packsync.org show them some love make a donation volunteer fill out a survey share the website share the organization whatever floats your boat today we got an interesting show for you today it's going to be a little bit different than usual but bear with me because we live in a world of genetics now more than ever for the past 30 years dna has become an increasing part of our criminal defense system our family research into our ancestry and even our workout and fitness plans yeah i know you can get a a dna test done and it'll tell you what's the best plan in order for you to achieve the type of fitness results that you want to achieve based on your genetics it's crazy in certain locations law enforcement has begun creating their own database of dna in addition to partnering with some ancestry companies to access their records and dna profiles now think about that for a moment those of you that are thinking about doing a profile kit they can and have turned over their dna profiles to law enforcement i know a lot of you might not be thinking that's a big deal some of you might be thinking that's a violation of your privacy whatever you think about it think about it is all i'm saying but in addition to accessing dna profiles from ancestry companies a cheek swab by a police officer is considered a lawful part of a standard search and they can keep your dna whether you are guilty of something or not Think about that as well while you're thinking. But thus far, all of the focus has been on reading and navigating DNA to acquire the information already written into who you are. Now, however, it is possible to erase that DNA in a way that is probably far too simple. It's a genetic cut and paste, and it's become a real thing, and it's become available to any consumer without any oversight matters have come to such a point that the department of defense has ordered a study well they ordered it in the past studies out now to review the field of synthetic biology and the report has some alarming things in it in this episode of lessons from the screen we will be looking at the technology that allows you to modify genetic code yours or something else's as well as looking at the report commissioned by the department of defense we will be giving you some information in this episode but i said we're going to do something different we're going to leave the takeaways for you to gather for yourself and we want you to share those takeaways with us on the website or through the freedom train social media handles and we're doing it this way for this particular show because we want we really want to hear what people think about this outside of being told what we think about it and we're really trying to encourage and and engage in critical thought and back and forth communication but in this episode of lessons from the screen you will still get the information we will be talking about the age of synthetic biology the word for this show is CRISPR, spelled C-R-I-S-P-R. Now, CRISPR stands for Cluster Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, 
and it is a technology that allows precise genetic editing of any kind of genetic material. It is basically hacking the genome in the same way, the same light, that someone could hack a computer program. And CRISPR itself isn't just a technology for editing genetic material. The name for the technology comes from what is believed to be a part of the bacterial immune system, a sort of genetic memory for bacteria that allows them to recognize and destroy invaders that they have encountered before. Now, the way CRISPR works, I'm going to simplify this so all of you guys that are science heads that really know how it works, back off, man. Just chill out. I'm simplifying it for the everyday common person. So basically, CRISPR allows you to create a RNA strand or a protein synthesis that can be injected into a human person. And that RNA strand will go and look through and it'll identify the matching code in something's in somebody's DNA or in, in something's DNA. Now, there's also a second portion where you can create another protein synthesis that will cut out that designated code. And there is another process where you can create another protein that will then add in a new code. So it's literally cut and paste of genetic material. Now, it's not as simple as it sounds, but with CRISPR, you don't have to know all of the ins and outs of it because it's a very user-friendly system. That's like nowadays when we create websites, you don't actually have to know HTML or, or, or any of the coding language because everything is drag and drop. CRISPR is drag and drop genetic engineering. Yeah, I know. That's kind of crazy to even think about it. But it's here, people. It's here. So in 2013, Zhang Lab published the first method to engineer CRISPR to edit the genome in mouse and human cells. And by 2016, it was available on the market for regular citizens. Now that's right, I said regular, everyday, average people. You listening to this right now can go and pick up a CRISPR kit and begin genetically modifying things, including yourself, right now, for only a couple hundred dollars. Like 150, I think is the average price. And it's not complicated or complex, as I said earlier. You can already find YouTube videos of people injecting themselves with all kinds of concoctions, hoping to change their appearance in some way. Now, thankfully, they have failed, and there haven't been any serious side effects. But yes, it is happening. But it isn't all bad, though. Earlier this week, a company used CRISPR technology to genetically modify cancer cells in mice, causing them to kill cells at the home tumor location when they return. And this is possible because when cancer cells spread to another location of the body and create a new tumor, those original cells return to their home tumor. However, it is something for a lot of people to worry about, which brings us to the DOD report. The Department of Defense is concerned because genetic engineering tools are expanding and becoming easy to acquire and easy to utilize, like the CRISPR kit that I mentioned earlier. And of course, they are worried about some nut job wacko creating a bioweapon in their garage with a $150 kit. And this is spurred on by the fact that it isn't hard to get older viruses and bacteria that have done immense damage historically and alter them to be even worse. Mail order polio exists. That's right. You can go to a website, punch in some information, and they will mail you polio. It's crazy. I don't know what people think about when they decide to make certain things available, but it is crazy. And, and to make things even worse, because polio isn't the worst thing out there, um, there are DNA instructions for smallpox available, which means you can, with a certain level of expertise and technology, and the technology piece isn't hard to acquire, and neither is the expertise piece nowadays, you can create the smallpox virus recreate the smallpox virus 
and you can edit it to be even worse. Now, this is alarming because we already see the impact of penicillin over prescription and the overuse of other antibacterials creating super germs. But now imagine people creating them in a lab for fun, such as what could be done in an extremely drastic and extreme case. But there are science classes in high school using CRISPR kits to edit bacterial genetic material. So, you know, you draw your own conclusions with Derek. I mean, kids shooting up the schools, kids creating a, a plague to destroy mankind in that same school. I don't think it's that far-fetched, but, you know, a lot of people do, and maybe it is. I don't know. Anyways, moving forward. The National Academies of Sciences thus far has been the first to try to rank the national security threats possible with modern technology. In 2016, gene editing was placed on the list of potential weapons for mass destruction by the U.S. intelligence community. The DOD is worried about these developments not as a current threat, but as a possible future threat that is worth preparing for now and the recreating of known pathogenic viruses is at the top of their list of concerns, as it has already been demonstrated. But next on the list was making already existing pathogens more dangerous, and that was followed by creating entirely new pathogens that have never been seen before. Now, I got to say that was ranked at the lower level of concerns, but it's still in the realm of possibilities, given modern technology and given the rapid rate at which new technology is created. And so we know that the technology is available because we know that the government has done things like this before, but it has never been as easy to access as it is now. Also on the list was modifying the human genome using human gene drives. Now, this is problematic because it doesn't affect the active genes of a living organism. That means as a human being, it wouldn't affect you. You wouldn't even know that your genes have been overridden. It affects the genes of the reproductive cells. So in men, it affects the genes represented in your sperm. In women, it affects the genes represented in your eggs. And I shouldn't have to go into detail. You know what that means. That means that any changes made would effectively take effect in the next generation, your children. And that generation would pass on those changes to subsequent generations, creating lasting alterations, good or bad, for the entire species. And this sounds great if you're talking about immunity to diseases or maybe somebody wants, you know, I don't know, they want their kids to be able to fly like a pterodactyl or something. I don't know. Sounds great as long as nobody's getting hurt. But we also know that it's equally terrifying because there are a lot of people out there that would have uh, less than noble intentions. We'll say that. That's a good use of words. Ain't it? There's a lot of assholes out there. Modifying the human microbiome is also on the list. And this is extremely troubling. Our microbiome is basically all of the trillions of bacteria that live on and in us that contribute to our survival. And an interesting fact that I've always been fascinated with is the fact that we have more bacteria cells on us and in us than we have human cells. And each of us, you know, makes up our own ecosystem. We are essentially our own planet. Altering those bacteria could result and some pretty nasty, nasty effects, getting sick more often, the inability to digest certain things. Um, and if that microbiome is destroyed completely, so are you. So one of the, and, and when we go back to the inability to digest certain things, the human digestive system doesn't have the ability to digest plant matter. We don't have the ability to digest fiber. So when we ingest plant matter, it is the microbiome of our gut, of our digestive system, that actually does the digestion of that plant matter. And what we consume, the nutrients and things that we get out of those things, are actually the waste products 
of the bacteria that are actually doing the digestion so that's something to think about every time and i think i've said this before in another show i think it was on the what about uh what about health or or whatever it was called that really horrible documentary about being a vegan uh when you eat plants and vegetables which is necessary is mandatory the bulk of your diet should consist of plants and vegetables you're actually the nutrients that you're consuming is actually the shit and piss of the bacteria that live in your stomach so that's an interesting thought to think about something for you to think about the next time you're chewing on that apple or eating that block broccoli anyways but you should still eat it because you need that stuff so i'm saying all that i know i got way off topic on the tangent but i'm saying all that to say that the human bi microbiome is extremely important and any sort of alterations to that can be catastrophic we see what happens when it becomes when it becomes unbalanced when you start having inflammation of the gut when you start having stomach pains when you start having all of these other issues in women when the microbiome of their reproductive system their organs their reproductive organs their vagina gets out of whack you start seeing them having all sorts of viral infections all sorts of bacterial infections and things of that nature so it is extremely important to maintain a healthy microbiome but it is also important to remember that all of these things right now might be years, decades, well, at the rate that technology is developing, days or months from being a reality. But the, the military isn't taking any chances. And it also has to be pointed out that a good chunk of the funding for this technology comes from the military. But as a community, I'll say this, this is another place where we could use some of our best and brightest getting involved helping us out and educating us on what's going on in terms of synthetic biology now this would normally be the part where you would hear the music dun, 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 dun. but i told you we're not gonna do that this show what i want you to do is i want you to think about and i want you to answer in the social media pages, Facebook pages, wherever you see this post for this show art, even on the show page itself at Freedom Train Radio, www.freedomtrainradio.com, Lessons from the Screen tab. Let me know. What do you think this means for the community? Does it change anything having Billy be able to make genetic edits in his bedroom? What do you think we can do about it? Should we do anything? Those are questions and many more. Whatever you feel when you hear this topic, I want you to think about it. And I want you to drop a, a comment or a message, preferably on the Freedom Train website and the Lessons from the Screen Tab area, this post. So thank you for tuning in. And I will see you next week for the next episode of Lessons from the Screen. Lessons from the screen, what we mean is we go through Different documentaries to tell you what they gon' do Give you our lessons, give them our blessings If they trash, we tell you, there is no second guessing Knowledge is power, but time is precious And we're here to keep you from them lessons So sit back as we groove, giving you the review So you only spend time on the docs that you need to Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Lessons from the Screen Lessons from the Screen is brought to you by Paxine through the Freedom Train Network, you can find us on www.freedomtrainradio.com or on iTunes, Google Play Music, or Stitcher. Be sure to head to one of those places and leave us a review, and then be sure to head back to the website to let us know what you think about the show and communicate with us. Also, be sure to head to www.packsync.org and show some love and support for our sponsors. PackSync is doing big things in the community and trying to do more, always trying to do more. So be sure to head to the website. That's www.pactsinc.org. Donate, volunteer, become a member, talk about it, whatever. They can use your support. And once again, they are doing great things in the community. And as always, Lessons from the Screen has a frame of reference and perspective that is aligned with that of the black community. The things that we look at whether it be on the trending Tuesday or the regular lessons from the screen show will always be looked at from the black perspective. So keep that in mind because we need more minds shaped into that perspective and trying to do things that we need done for ourselves. 
So with that in mind, again, thank you guys for listening in. Remember to tune in to the Freedom Train Radio. We have the app that's available that you can get from the website. It's in the Google Play Store. Sorry, it's not available on iTunes yet. We have the live internet radio. And we have more shows coming up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you guys on Thursday for the next episode of Lessons from the Screen.